Hey guys, it's now time for part two of our Invisible Man build. Well, hey guys, and welcome to part two. I'm going to start my portion of the video here by continuing to detail these accessories. And I'm starting off with these books. So obviously you can just paint the books. Um, there is a decal sheet that Mark pointed out is available by a company called TSDS. And it comes with decals for the bindings and the covers and uh, decals for a bunch of other things as well. But uh, I decided to see what I could do to create my own decal sheet. So what I did was I went on Google and searched old book bindings. And you come up with a bunch of pictures of book bindings. And so what I did was I pulled a few of them offline that I think would work. And I um, sized them down to the size that we needed here and printed them on white decal paper. I then uh, applied black primer just to have a dark background for our decals. Uh, not always quite necessary with uh, decals printed on white paper, but I just thought it might be helpful. And then I applied a gloss coat to help with the adhesion. And I have to say I'm pleased with the initial results. This is my first attempt here with these books. And as you can see, the resolution is really good. And that's giving us some nice detail even at this scale. All right, so the books are all completed now. I wanted to show you a few things here. You can see that there is this detailing here that simulates the pages of books, and it looks pretty convincing. I actually tried to paint this on to begin with, and I really wasn't satisfied with the way things are turning out. Uh, I, I started out with some gold here to represent gold leaf, but I didn't want all the books to look the same. So I decided to go back to the internet and search sides of books or pages of books, and sure enough, there are pictures you can find of the sides of books. So I pulled some off and created four columns of what you see here on a 6x4 uh, uh, sheet of white decal paper. And uh, that gave me plenty to work with. And I trimmed them and fit them into place. And you can see it worked out pretty well. Uh, the book cover here was also found online and uh, sized it accordingly to fit there. And uh, also found some textures that I used for these notebooks and a couple of the other ones that you see inside the stack here for the shelves. And um, you can also see that I did not apply any detailing here. And that's simply because you can't see them. So I didn't bother to take time to do that. I just painted the side here because this is somewhat visible. Just using red leather paint and then masking this off and applying a cream colored paint by just dabbing this with... Um, a paintbrush. And uh, you can see the other stacks are also completed here as well. So um, I will make any of these decals, or I should say the JPEGs for the decals available to any subscriber here. Just contact me here on my YouTube channel or email me. Um, I don't print and send out decals. I just don't have time to do that. But uh, all you need are JPEGs and to get a hold of some white decal paper and you can do it yourself. Last thing I want to mention is uh, to protect the decals, I did first apply a dull coat, and I did leave the dull coat uh, on the pages here, uh, but to bring back some of the colors, because it did fade some of the colors there, uh, I applied a semi-gloss instead. So they're finished with both a semi-gloss and a dull coat. Well, before moving on to the glass work, I decided to go ahead and work on these little papers that are supposed to be uh, on this desk here. And what I did was went back to the internet and just Googled antique uh, body chart along with scientific papers with calculations and these images came up sized them down they're about 2.2 by 3.4 centimeters and uh, printed them out on uh, this art paper which is kind of like a, a little bit off-white in color and uh, I think they're looking pretty good here so I'm just um, attaching them to the tabletop with just a light amount of tacky glue so now that this is done let's go ahead and see how Mark is doing on his build everyone, we are back with an update on my Mobius Invisible Man project. Today's video is mostly going to be about the props. We're going to start off with some Stylores primer. This is made by Badger. We're going to be applying it to the books that come with the kit first. 
Now, Spinorest primer is a very good primer in my opinion. It's uh, self-leveling, it's very forgiving, and it sprays very easily without clogging the airbrush. Spraying here about 15 PSI, doing several light, even coats over the books. So as you can see when I'm finished, the books have a nice clean finish, it gives us a good starting point to apply our paint and later our decals. Each of the books were hand painted using uh, acrylic paints by Vallejo. I left the spines white because the decals I'm going to be applying are on clear carrier film. So here we are applying the decals to the spines of the books. Always put some micro set down first and we just slide the decals into position. Okay, this decal blotter I'm using here is from Tamiya and it's, uh, it's pretty nice for soaking up excess water and for gently putting the decals in the final position. Use Microsol to help the decals to settle down over the irregular surfaces of the books. And this is the final result after um, letting the decals dry with some Microsol applied to them and then a clear coat applied over, over the decals. finishing up the books it was time to move on to some of the other props like the invisible frog these are the internal parts of the lab rats I really detailed these out but um, because of the frosted plastic uh, you really can't make out much detail once the uh, the rats are fully assembled but they still look pretty cool flask and beakers and graduates and various chemical bottles that uh, come with the kit. I simulate um, fluids inside the containers by first uh, drilling a small hole in the bottom with a pin vise. I then use a syringe and fill it up with some Tamiya transparent paint and then inject it into the uh, containers. I use super glue and some kicker to seal the hole and this is the final result. Common household spices were also used in some of the jars. I downloaded um, some vintage apothecary labels to apply to my various bottles and jars. They were printed out on white decals and paper and just uh, cut out and applied using microsite microsite. And here you can see the final results. Each of the bottles were also sealed with their clear coat to uh, preserve the decals. Dollhouse jars were uh, purchased from uh, Amazon to uh, supplement the uh, kit supplied jars and bottles. And 
here are all the props, bottles, chemical containers, scales, microscopes, everything placed on the furniture. All of the open beakers and flasks have a five minute epoxy inside of them that's been tinted with uh, Tamiya clear paints. Other props such as the clock, the microscope, the candle bra, um, these are all dollhouse miniature items that you can order from Amazon.com. And then I have everything mocked up to kind of get a preview of what the final uh, product will look like. Um, nothing is glued down to the base, but it just gives me a general idea overall what everything's going to look like when, it, when it's finished. that we have the props completed it's time to move on to the invisible man figure himself so what we have here are, are some sub assemblies of the figure and I'm just kind of dry fitting the parts to uh, see if I have to make any adjustments or um, alterations to the kit to get things to fit properly Just look at the detail on the head here. It's, it's pretty impressive for a styrene kit. As I start to glue the parts together, I recheck the fit and the alignment to make sure everything is in order. I'm using uh, Tamiya regular and Tamiya extra thin cement. continue to uh, apply the sub-assemblies to the figure again rechecking everything to make sure that all the parts are fitting as they're supposed to fit one thing about the Tamiya cement is it doesn't set up right away so you have time to make adjustments if you need to the fit on this kit though is pretty good Now I'm just trying to get an idea of what the figure is going to look like so the shoes aren't glued on and neither is the head but I'm just kind of putting them in place to get an idea. It's a pretty impressive figure even without his arm. I decided to Dremel out the uh, plastic lenses which are opaque. I'm going to use some uh, micro scale glue and uh, tint it with Tamiya paints to uh, create new lenses. And here is the figure mocked up to give me an idea of what its uh, final appearance will look like. It's ready for primer and that will be in the very next video. Wow, so Mark is doing some great work there. In the meantime, I've decided to go ahead and add another feature to our back wall, and that's this paneling that I purchased at Peggy's Place. That's a miniature store again here in San Diego. And it's thin enough to have cut into pieces with just an X-Acto knife, so I have it ready to go along with this baseboard here, and I'm ready to apply some stain. And the stain that I used here was the same one that was applied to the floor. This is from rust -Oleum. it's a cherry wood color. And as you can see, it easily brushes on. 
Once dried, I applied some wood glue here to the back side and attached the panels to the wall. And here we have the finished wall, and as you can see, it matches the flooring pretty well. Well, Mark did such a great job showing you how this stuff goes together. I'm not going to spend too much time on how I did it since it's very similar. But as you can see, I also use household spices to fill in some of these jars. And uh, I used his trick, because he's the one who told me about it, of using a syringe and taking some Tamiya clear paint to fill in some of these jars and flasks. So rather than printing these on white decal paper, I decided to print these vintage chemistry labels on some sketching paper, which is off-white in color. I don't know, I just thought it would add a different look to them, and so I sized them down, cut them out, and attached them to the bottles with just some white glue. And here we have a shot now with my table and the jars and other things put on top of it, and I'm pretty happy with the end results here. So next let's go ahead and work on the goggles here. As you can see, these are the goggles that come with the kit. However, they don't come with these lenses. They come as a solid piece. And uh, as you can see, I'm taking my Dremel here to cut out the section to accommodate these lenses. And what I did next was to cut out some clear styrene. They can't function as a lenses because I can't quite cut them to fit exactly in the place. There are some gaps there. So what I intend to do is to fill this up with uh, canopy glue, allow that to dry, and then tint those lenses with a Tamiya clear paint. So here's a shot of the goggles with the canopy glue. All right, and here now are the goggles with the lenses dried. It came out pretty well. I'm very happy with the results here. So I'm going to go ahead now and put some liquid masking fluid to protect them as I paint the goggles, after which I'm going to go ahead and apply, I think I'm going to use a Tamiya Clear Green for the lens color. So after applying a black primer, I mixed together gold and burnt umber, both Vallejo colors, and came up with a darker gold color that I used to paint the housing. After that was dry, I then applied this Tamiya Clear Green. And here are the completed goggles. Alright, well that pretty much does it with all the accessories. We are ready to move on to the main figure, but I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here, and we will continue on then in part three, where Mark and I will put the figures together, and we will do a final review for you. It's sure been a fun project to work on. I hope you had fun following along so far. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me here on my YouTube channel or at interstellarmodeler at gmail.com. See you in part three.